My name is Hohahis. Uh, that means the long road, long path, uh, Leroy Hill. I'm a base keeper and sub chief, uh, Cayuga Nation Bear Clan. Um, I'm a speaker in the ceremonies and, and speaker of our prophecy. And I um, do a lot of work with our elders and our chiefs and, and, and with our traditional knowledge. My name is uh, Gong Hyong Gye. Um, it's in the Cayuga language. And it's translated as the sky is going along. Like today, the clouds are moving along, so that's how my name came to be. I point ko na agat tron tonghoe kayakono ganatago. I'm a faith keeper. My responsibility over at Lower Cugas is to learn the ceremonies, to be able to be a speaker one day. And with our elders getting aren't well these days, they're not healthy, so our duties have been stepped up where we're. We're starting to get immersed in our to be speakers and be part of it. And I'm from the Cuba Nation. Wolf Clan. So, so we've been uh, working with uh, Jen and uh, Looking Back Project for a while now, and, and uh, we try our best to uh, to share our knowledge of the ceremonies and things we've learned. Uh, we've been fortunate to have spent a number of years with elders who have knowledge, and. Uh, I, uh, I've uh, been pretty pretty blessed. I, I've done that. I think most of my adult life that I've been around uh, knowledge keepers, and they've they've taught me and trained me. And in turn, I'm still in training, but I'm also training others. Uh, that we developed a methodology, I guess you would say, that's been successful in carrying on our ceremonial speaking and taking care of uh, our needs of our people, uh, medicinal, uh, right from birth to death and everything in between so um, that's uh, where we work at the resource center we're we're engaged in that on a daily basis and sometimes our days don't end till midnight some days uh, engaged in that so. yeah, we, uh, it was it was nice to Jen to come forward and ask us and to help with her project she was looking for knowledgeable people to to help with our cycle of ceremonies and it was nice to get on board with her and with me I I just started learning uh, 10 years ago and never spoke a language before and uh, I was really grateful for the Hohahi, Hohahis to let me be part of the program and I'm glad I really stuck with it. It's a really nice feeling to be able to sit and listen to our elders speak and, and like he said that they're knowledgeable and it's, it's helpful to us as learners how, how the language converses, the, right, the proper pronunciations and that. So that's been really helpful to me and I'm glad I've been, got to be a part of it. And hopefully to be a part of it. Um, I call myself an apprentice elder. As, any, as, we, as we age, you know, we're going to be the knowledgeable people. So that's what I, I look at myself as. So, so what we've been trying to do is trying to follow our traditional calendar, uh, ceremonial calendar, and uh, trying to work with uh, Jen in the Looking Back uh, project to have uh, cultural presentations and teachings done for the community and both uh, our, our people that are living outside of the Grand River Territory here. Uh, some, are, some have traveled in as far away as uh, uh, Niagara area, Buffalo and Niagara area, as well as the surrounding uh, towns. So even the urban, our urban relatives, uh, uh, they've benefited a lot from from this project, and uh, I'd like to see it continue. We, we try to follow the year calendar, uh, traditional calendar and ceremony. So, so this is what we're going to talk about. Is just a little bit about uh, our our new year is uh, generally a little different uh, from from the calendar new year and they, they, there's a moon we follow and five sleeps after the new moon we call Jishikobakshni that's, that's technically our beginning of a new cycle so sometimes that follows in, that falls in January sometimes in February um, I've seen it a couple occasions where it lined up in December so um, we follow the moon system uh, we follow a 13 month moon cycle and our ceremonial year begins with that uh, what I just spoke of so even that kind of knowledge if there there's a small pool of people that 
carry that knowledge uh, of uh, when is the right time and what's what to follow. And uh, I, I belong to uh, two longhouses, uh, Onondaga Longhouse and also Upper Cayuga Longhouse. So the Upper Cayuga Longhouse follow a star formation to tell them which month to go by. So there's a star formation that is called Hatikwa and that's just, there's a legend that these uh, hunters chase the bear up in the sky and some say that's the dancers. So there, there are stories connect with those uh, with those uh, star formations as well. And at Lower Cayuga they say that's some dancers in the sky. Uh, the stars formation they follow and in English they call them the Pleiades. In the language we call them either Oganya or Al Sadikwata. They have two names. So so we follow that and that's the beginning of our new year uh, based by the moon and the stars. So we still have that knowledge which we're pretty appreciative of yeah. because uh, there's many ancient cultures around the world that uh, we've seen and we've heard from and we've learned and um, they're following the lunar system and also you know they, they mark things by the stars and the, and the movement of the sun and moon so we, st we still have some degree of that in our cultural knowledge that uh, we've found out over the last decade or more <laughs> so anyways yeah, with them with them stars he's talking about Ganyate, we go by today with the calendar but with that moon system or the star system is uh them stars are straight straight above us um, just after dark usually around seven o'clock in the winter time when it's dark early um, so we usually at lower cuegus that's we kind of go by that um, star system and we kind of set the date of uh, when we're going to have gaini huage the four ceremonies and with that four ceremonies like Kohahi said that it's the start of our new year and with our ceremony of the Gaini Huage is that's when we ask of everything the Creator gave us that we're going to see it again. And the winds turn warm. We're going to see everything. All the new things we'll see it again that He planted for us. We'll see it all here the grasses trees, the medicines, the food, all the stuff he left for us to survive. So that's at that time of year is when we'll ask to see all these things again. And with our traditional Ganohanyuk, it's a lot of it's in there. Everything that's in that Ganohanyuk, the Thanksgiving address is in our, our four ceremonies. So that's how we how we how we base our, our ceremonies of giving thanks. See things again. So, anyways, um, so, so we'll just go through what what we've done. We've done presentations like the midwinter. The, we call it the midwinter ceremony. That's technically our new year, start of a new cycle. And then after that, we have ceremonies to, for the trees, the running of the sap, and, and we give thanks for that. And syrup making season. Uh, we also have prayer. Uh, we, we we ask that nobody get hurt while they're in the bush. And so we have ceremonies for the trees in general as well because we use many different trees in many different ways uh, from medicine to sports to tools to housing <laughs> so we acknowledge all that in ceremony and give thanks uh, then uh, we get into the change of the seasons as well we have when the thunderers come back then we have a ceremony for the thunderers to welcome them back and give thanks and, and uh, after that the season begins to change and when the season changes we'll give thanks again for the sun and the moon ceremonies for the sun and the moon and uh, to give thanks that uh, uh, everything has fallen in order how the Creator made it and that uh, we, we asked for it to come that way in the midwinter ceremony that the season will roll smoothly and we'll see new things grow and right up to our planting season so at the planting season before we get before we plant we have a ceremony some call it blessing the seeds um, we call it Tadina Hong with trying other longhouses, they'll say, which means we're just really there to to entertain our sustainers of life. So at that at that time there, will it's just, it's really intended to entertain the, the, the foods 
uh, they have a life just like we do. Uh, the, some call it the life of sustainers, John Hicko, and some call it the sisters. Sena, they cannot know the that's their sisterhood. So we have a ceremony in their honor before we work our gardens and plant, and we ask for a good growing season, and that uh, we draw our, continue to draw strength and life from from the foods he, he gave us. And the seeds are used in the ceremony. Game is played, and the men challenge the women to play. Who has to do the work in the garden season? So we have it's a little bit of fun as well, as part of the ceremony. So when we're done planting, we have another ceremony to give thanks that we've seen that ceremony through in good health, and we wish for them to have strong mind. Uh, we believe that the food we call Junhiko have a life just like we do. They have mind. They have they have an existence, and we relate to that existence in ceremony. So we wish them to have a strong mind through the duration of summer and everything uh, go well. Uh, not, And we also ask that it not be too dry through the summer with the thunder that our, our crops will grow healthy and the, the rain will come. The thunders will bring the water when it's needed, refre refresh the plants and the water. So then we get into the, after that, then, the, then it's usually berries come on. Berry season, we have strawberry ceremony. Uh, at Upper Cayuga, we have a ceremony for the raspberries and other berries at that time, which are later in the season. So raspberries and blackberries and things like that. So we have ceremonies as these things happen to give thanks. I think with uh, with the people at the Longhouse in our tradition, it seems like we're always giving thanks. We're supposed to be always thankful and grateful. And, and there's only a couple occasions where we actually are asking something. That's something that I've observed that uh, in the traditional culture. So. I'll let him take it over from the berry season. <laughs> With that uh, berries um, and the gion hiko, the stuff that grows wild, um, it's not only for people too. Um, you'll see the animals starting to get ready like now. You see the squirrels running around, the chipmunks here, you know, they're running around. You've got, you got the wild uh, ropes behind us. They're gathering their nuts, putting them away, and with the fruit too, they, the wild fruit there, it's it's for them too to, so they have they have a, a sus sustenance for that, <laughs> and, and uh, you'll see them there, you'll hear them chirping and, and squeaking, you know, their the noises they make, that they're joyful too that they've had a chance to to taste the fruit again. And anybody that walks out in the wild. You'll see that. You'll see the animals and birds just flocking in the trees and you're wondering what they're doing and you go to that tree or brush or something, you'll see those little berries hanging in the trees. So that's, that's food for them too. So that's, they must look forward to it. So we do, so as people. So you see these animals going for that too.